Hi, you're listening to Barely There Theater, where we present theater to you, barely. Up this week, a play. There will be a brief message after the show is over. Now, sit back, relax, and please enjoy Swan Song by Anton Chekhov, featuring Adam Cerny, Alexander Richardson, and Mike Schultz. Hey, you know, Jody Magnet. The scene is laid on the stage of a country theater at night after the play. At the back of the theater are a series of unpainted doors leading into the dressing rooms. The stage is encumbered with all sorts of rubbish, the visible traces of the stage's recent encounter with the muse of tragedy, a meeting as secret as it was violent and as ugly as vice. In the middle of the stage is an overturned stool. There'd been a benefit that night, and all the audience had swarmed the stage to drink with the performers at the close of the performance. But they're all gone now. The silence is sepulchral. Vasily, a stout man of 58 years, enters from the dressing room with a candle in hand. He is still in costume from the night before, a a short tunic and bright tights. His white stage makeup has partially rubbed off from sweat and booze. <laughs> well, this is funny. Yeah, here's a good joke. I fall asleep in my dressing room when the play was over, and there I was calmly snoring after everybody else had left the theater. Ah! <laughs> I'm a foolish old man, a poor old dodderer. I have been drinking again, and so I fell asleep. In there, sitting up. That was clever. <laughs> Good for you, oh boy! <laughs> mm. yeah. You go, go! Petrushka! Where the devil are you? Petrushka! The scoundrels must be asleep. And an earthquake wouldn't wake them now. Yagorka! The comedian remembered that Yagorka and Petrushka had received three rubles each for vodka on occasion of the benefit. After such a windfall, they never stayed in the theater at night. Not a sound. Only echoes answer me. The rascals have gone off and have probably locked up the theater. The whole squadron's been sleeping in my mouth. <coughs> Don't be so thirsty, old fool. You've got to stop. Back's aching and my head's aching and I'm getting cold. I'm getting old. I can play the fool and brag and pretend to be young, but my life is really over now. I kiss my hand to the 58 years that have gone by. I'll never see them again. I have drained the bottle. Only a few little drops are left at the bottom. Nothing but the dregs. Yes, yes, that's the case, Vasily, old boy. The time has come for you to rehearse the part of a mummy. Whether you like it or not, death is on its way to you. It was strange, thought Vasily, that he had been performing for 35 years 
and this was the first time he saw a theater at night after the lights had been put out. The first time. How dark it is! Vasily walked to the footlights and peered into the dark. He couldn't see a thing. Just the prompter's booth, the seats, and the music stands of the orchestra were barely visible. The entire auditorium looked like a black, bottomless pit, a gaping mouth, infinitely deep and desolate, soulless, like a grave in which death itself could be hiding. Ooh, Ooh how cold it is. <laughs> what a place for ghosts! <laughs> Yagorka! Yagorka! Trushka, where are you, you devils? I must give up drinking. I'm an old man. I shan't live much longer. If 58 people go to church and prepare for death, but here I am. <laughs> A profane old drunkard in this fool's dress. I'm simply not fit to look at. I must go and change it at once. Oh, this is a dreadful place. I should die of fright sitting here all night. This is where the spirits are sudden. A breeze blew through the theater and Vasily froze in terror. Who are you? Who are you? There was a white human figure standing in one of the critics' lodges. Who are you? The figure swung one leg over the barrier of the lodge and leapt down and silently, like a shadow, headed for the ramp. It's me. Ah! Ah! Who are you? It is I, sir, the prompter, Nikita Ivanich. It is I. It is I. Heavens! Who are you? It is you. You, Nikitushka. Ah. What? <laughs> what are you doing here? I spend my nights here in the dressing rooms. Ah. Only please be good enough. To not tell Alexei Fomich, sir, I have nowhere else to spend. Oh, night. it is you, Nikitushka, is it? Oh, just think. The audience called me out 16 times. They brought me these wreaths and lots of other things, too. They were all wild with enthusiasm, and yet not a soul came. When it was all over, to wake the poor, drunken, old man and take him home. And I am an old man, Nikitushka. I am 58 years old and I am ill. I have the heart left to go on. Don't, 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 don't go away. Nikitushka, I am old and helpless, and I feel it is time for me to die. Go, it is dreadful. <laughs> dreadful. It is time for you to go home, sir. I won't go home. I have no home. None. 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 Jesus Christ, have you forgotten where you live? I won't go there. I won't! I am all alone there. I have no but Nikitushka. No wife, no children. I am like the wind blowing across the lonely fields. I shall die and no one will remember me. It is awful to be alone. No one to cheer me. No one to caress me, no one to help me to 
bed when I am drunk. To whom do I belong to? Who needs me? Who loves me? Not a soul, Nikitushka. Your audience loves you. My audience has gone home. They're all asleep. And they've forgotten their old clown. No. Nobody needs me. Nobody loves me. I have no wife. No children. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Don't be so unhappy but about it. But I am a man. I am still alive. Warm red blood is tingling in my veins. The blood of noble ancestors. I am an aristocrat, Nikitushka. I served in the army, in the artillery, before I fell as low as this. And what a fine young chap I was. So handsome, so hot, so brave. Where is it all gone? What has become of those old days? There's the pit that has swallowed them all. I remember it all now. Thirty-five years of my life lie buried there. And what a life, Nikitushka. I can see it as clearly as I see your face. The ecstasy of youth. Faith, passion, the love of women. Women, Nikitushka. It is time you went to sleep, sir. When I first went on the stage in the first glow of passionate youth, I remember a woman loved me for my acting. She was beautiful, graceful as a poplar, young, innocent, pure, and radiant as a summer dawn. Her smile would charm away the darkest night. I remember I stood before her once, as I am now standing before you. She had never seemed so lovely to me as she did then, and she spoke to me so with her eyes. Such a look. I shall never forget it. No, not even in the grave. So tender, so soft, so deep, so bright and young. She loved me. Enraptured, intoxicated, I fell on my knees before her. I begged for my happiness. And she said, give up the stage. Give up the stage. Do you understand? She could love an actor, but marry him? Never! I was acting that day. I remember I had a foolish clown's part in it. As I acted, I felt my eyes being opened. I saw that the worship of the art I had held so sacred was a delusion and an empty dream that I was a servant, a fool, the plaything of the idleness of strangers. I understood my audience at last. And since that day, I have not believed in their applause, or in their wreaths, or in their enthusiasm. Yes, Nikitushka, the people applaud me. They buy my photograph, but I am a stranger to them. They don't know me. I am as the dirt beneath their feet. They are willing enough to meet me. But allow a daughter or a sister to marry me, an outcast, never! I have no faith in them, no faith in them. You look pale. It's time for you to go home. I saw through it all. Day and the knowledge was dearly bought, Nikitushka. 
After that, whom that girl, well, I began to wander aimlessly about, living from day to day without looking ahead. I took the parts of buffoons and low comedians, letting my mind go to wreck. God, oh, but I was a great artist. Once, too little by little, I threw away my talents, played the motley fool, lost my looks, lost the power of expressing myself, and became, in the end, nothing instead of a man. I have been swallowed up in that great black pit. I never felt it before, but tonight, when I woke up, I looked back, and there behind me lay 58 years. I have just found out what it is to be old. It is all over. All over. There. <laughs> there, dear master, be quiet. Of gracious, <laughs> Petrushka, Yagorka. But what a genius I was! You cannot imagine what power I had, what eloquence, how graceful I was, how tender, how many strings quivered in this breast. It chokes me to think of it. Listen, now, wait, let me get to my breath. Here's something from King Lear. The sky is black, see? Rain is pouring down. Thunder roars. Lightning splits the whole sky. And then, listen. Blow winds and crack your cheeks. Rage, blow, you cataracts and hurricanos spout till you have drenched our steeples, drowned the cocks. You sulfurous thought, executing fires, vaunt couriers of oak cleaving thunderbolts, singe my white beard. And thou, all shaking thunder, strike flat the thick rotundity of the world. Crack nature's molds, all germs spill at once, that make ungrateful man. Now, the part of the fool. Come, take the fool's part. Be quick. I can't wait. Oh, Nuncle, court holy water in a dry house is better than this rain water out o'er the door. Good Nuncle, in, ask thy daughter's blessing. Here is a knight pities neither wise men nor fools. Rumble thy bellyful, spit, fire, spout, rain. Nor rain, wind, thunder, fire are my daughters. I tax not you, you elements with unkindness. I never gave you kingdom, called you children. Ah. <laughs> there, there is strength. Ah. There is talent for you. I'm a great artist. Now then, there's something else of the same kind, to bring back my youth for me. For instance, I'll take this from Hamlet. I'll begin. Let me see. How does it go? Oh, yes. Oh, this is it. Oh, the recorders. Let me see one. To withdraw with you. Why do you go about to recover the wind of me? as if you would drive me into a toil. Oh, my lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. I do not well understand that. Will you 
play the bombus part? Um, mm, my lord, I cannot. I tell you. Believe me, I cannot. I do beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. It is as easy as lying. <laughs> Govern these antigens with your finger and thumb. Give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music. Look, you know, these are the stones. But these I, I cannot command to any utterance of harmony. I, I have not the skill. Why, look, you. How unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stalks. You would pluck out the heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass, and there is much music. Excellent voice in this little organ. Yet cannot you make it speak? It's blood. Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will, though you can fret me, you cannot play upon me. Wow. the devil is there any old age in that uh, I'm not old this is all nonsense a torrent of strength rushes over me this is life freshness youth old age and genius can't exist together <laughs> you seem to be struck dumb Nikodushka <laughs> uh, wait wait a second let me come to our senses again oh good lord all right, now, then, listen. Did you ever hear such tenderness? No, such music. Ah, then, softly. The moon had set. There was not any light. Save of the lonely legioned watch stars, pale in outer and what by fits made bright, but oleanders in a rosy veil searched by the lamping fly whose little spark went in and out like passion's bashful hope. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Uh, uh, there are Petrushka and Yogorka coming back. Yes, you have genius. Genius, my boy. Oh, come here to me, boys! <laughs> Let us go and get dressed. <laughs> I'm not old! <laughs> All that is foolishness! <laughs> foolishness. What? What are you crying for? <laughs> you, you poor old granny, you! What's the, what's the matter now? <laughs> this, well, this won't do! Hello! No, oh, there, 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 this won't do at all. Come, come, old man. Oh, don't what? stare so. What makes you stare like that? Up there, there, shh, there, there, there. Don't cry. Where, where there is art and, and genius, there can never be such things as old age. Or the loneliness, uh, or sickness, <laughs> oh, death. Death. death itself is sad. 
No, 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 no. It is all over for us now. What sort of a genius is if I'm like a squeezed lemon, a cracked bottle, and you, you are the old rat of the theater. <laughs> a prompter. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, come on. Come on. Do, do, do you remember those lines from Othello? Hey, Katushka. Rapid clouds have drunk the last pale beam of even. The gathering winds will call the darkness soon. And profoundest midnight shroud the serene lights of heaven. They go out together. The curtain falls slowly. Thanks for listening. The goal of Barely There Theatre is to present theatre for free to anyone, anywhere, at any time. All we ask in return is that if you enjoyed what you just listened to, share it with someone. Tune in for the next episode where we rehearse the play you just listened to. Once again, thanks for listening to Barely There Theatre.